It's the champagne before takeoff that really lets you know you're about to fly in a more refined manner than usual. Sitting in my spacious seat on board a Qantas Airbus A380 to Sydney with a flute of Charles Hyde Seek Brute in hand the gloomy. Sunday afternoon at Heathrow outside seemed to magically look a little brighter and soonier. Let there be no mistake. Business class is completely worth it for this flight. Scroll down for video I had taken the exact same flight two months earlier. In economy, at the time I had no idea I'd be doing it again in style. On that journey, what felt like several hours of cramped. Fitful dozing had only resulted in crossing the Pak Strait between India and Sri Lanka. In business the hours and miles seemed to melt away. Unexpectedly I found myself sharing the business class cabin with the entire Wallabies rugby squad. Fresh from back-to-back -back defeats to Scotland and England their mood was subdued. As I finished my glass of fizz I couldn't help but feel the old phrase in victory you deserve it, in defeat you need it seem quite apt. I used my extra boarding time to do some surreptitious last minute online searches for the stats of those matches just in case any of the team felt like reliving the trauma. A subtle sliding up of the privacy divider between our seats suggested that was not going to happen. At just over six feet tall I'm more than familiar with the old knee in the tray table situation most air travelers experience. But try as I might I simply couldn't reach the back of the seat in front of me with my legs outstretched. Legroom is always curtailed in economy. Anyone six feet tall or more will certainly experience the dreaded leg touch with their adjoining passengers at some point. In business I was looking forward to catching a few movies on the 10-inch entertainment screen. But was distracted by the 8-way movement controller for my seat. There are built-in massage settings and lumbar controllers. 2. For ultimate comfort, a USB port in the chair, meanwhile, means you can bring your own devices for entertainment. The in-flight entertainment system is a notch down in economy. With a smaller screen to watch I found myself straining my neck more often to view it and the headphones are also more uncomfortable to wear than those in business class. Frequent flyers know it pays to bring your own and I rude my rookie error in that regard. Chef Raymond Blank explains how he creates his Eurostar menus shocking moment schoolboy floors his rival with huge punch. Shocking CCTV footage shows the moment of the fatal punch Canadian man tackles enormous cyst that grew in only four days McGowan has screaming match with transgender woman at bookstore amazing drone footage shows daredevil slacklining above huge waves. Rebels in Syria rejoice as they shoot down Russian fighter jet Syrian rebels shoot down Russian fighter jet in rare success. PetSmart employee caught abusing dog she was grooming koala rescued after found struggling to swim in public pool fridge. Organization hacks that will save you space and time the Queen and Prince Philip arrive for church in West Newton. Qantas spent 12 months building it and the hard work has definitely paid off. It's spacious. It's luxurious and will give the well-heeled a stylish start to their journey. Other highlights include a huge brass chandelier, great selfie background material and menus designed by Rockpool. Qantas Group CEO Alan Joyce said investing in the first dedicated Qantas lounge at Heathrow was key as the airline prepares to directly airlink Europe and Australia for the first time. The kangaroo route is at the heart of Qantas identity and London is one of our most important destinations, said Mr. Joyce. We have worked with leaders in design. 
food in service to create a lounge that is modern and comfortable and incorporates the aesthetics of the Qantas lounges that make our customers feel at home. Fast forward back to business class and it was time to get even more comfy. The cabin crew set up my mattress cover and soft blanket for me during a toilet break. Complimentary pajamas, travel socks and an amenities kit that includes assorted toiletries including a toothbrush and toothpaste plus earplugs and eye cover were also provided. All very nice, but hunger struck. In economy the food is serviceable but is mainly pre-packed and there is no sense of anyone having had some sort of creativity over its presentation. It's a different story in business. With an in-flight menu inspired by Sydney's famed rock pool bar and grill I got a fast track taste for the gourmet life down under goat's cheese, shaved fennel and roast tomato salad as a starter was invigoratingly fresh. I thought my seared red snapper main course was a valiant attempt at a tough dish to execute mid-flight but looking at a my neighbor's plate wished I'd plumped for the braised lamb instead. As Rockpool has been voted as having the best by the glass wine list in the world. World of Fine Wine Awards 2016. It was no surprise to see some great options on the drinks trolley. A glass of 2012 Forest Hill Chardonnay from the Mount Barker region in Western Australia showed mature richness and style. A brief one and half hour stopover in Dubai gives time to visit the business class lounge and showers. For UK residents Dubai is a marvel as they use the UK 3 pin socket, laptop out, phone on charge. No need for the bulky travel plug adapter. I landed in Sydney at 6.30 am about as fresh and relaxed as a long haul flight can allow. Qantas flies from London Heathrow to Sydney on its A380 from 3,867 pounds business class return to book. Visit Qantas.com for more on things to do in Sydney and New South Wales visit www.visitance.com.